Hello and welcome to the This Works For Me Virtual Summit. I'm your host, Fermpe Watson. I am the director of the Faculty Development Center at Morris State University. In this summit, I will be having conversations with individuals who will be sharing practical strategies that have worked for them. And we trust that you will find many of these strategies helpful in your quest to succeed in higher education and beyond. With me today is Dr. Wendy Berkey. Dr. Berkey, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm delighted to have you. I'm going to open the floor for you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Could you tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do? Um, yes, I teach at a university in Connecticut. Um, we specialize in, in many areas, but among those areas is allied health. So I teach in exercise science as well as health sciences. My professional background prior to teaching uh, was in area hospitals. I worked in cardiology as an exercise physiologist and I did some consulting in that area as well. Those experiences have really driven my teaching, scholarship and service at the university. Right, and as a matter of fact, the title of your strategy today is creating a robust tenure and promotion application package. And I know from our conversation, you are going to focus more on the service aspect of it and how you have been enjoying using service to help to make a good and strong promotion package. Will you tell us why or what impressed you to start using this strategy and how has it worked for you? Um, I will. Uh, when you're thinking about uh, promotion and tenure, we're aware that we need to prepare uh, all kinds of evidence and examples of excellence in teaching, scholarship, and service. And at my university, similar probably to yours and maybe others, there are ample opportunities, which is great, uh, to serve the department in curriculum development, to serve uh, the college and committees, to serve the university in the form of committees and even faculty government, um, and also in our community. And that's you know, how I was able to connect some of my past job experiences with community service. Um, well, my challenge really was to find an area of service where I really felt like I was making a contribution to the university. And I think as important, something that I really enjoyed. And it wasn't until I found the area of faculty development and helping with that as a faculty member, it wasn't until I made that connection that I really uh, thought that I not only found my perfect area of service at the university, uh, but I found that when I was able to identify that, it was really helpful uh, for my promotion um, application as well. Wow. <laughs> as the director of the Faculty Development Center here at Murray State, I'm pleased to hear you say that, you know, you really enjoyed serving in the area of faculty development, and it would be great if many faculty had your perspective. So could you give us uh, some examples, a few examples of how you have used the service to help you have a good promotion package? Sure, uh, because it really was somewhat of a continuum. Um, my entrance into this area was just, uh, as a faculty member, becoming more interested in learning about how I could improve my courses. And my university uh, provided a, a many different types of seminars and one hour classes and coffee and brown bag lunch sessions uh, where we learned different teaching strategies, but we also learned how to use uh, a variety of digital tools. So it started with me being able to um, put the, those professional development activities typically in a, in, sometimes in that service category. But as I became more and more interested in it, and because I had taken a lot of these uh, sessions and classes, I, I was starting to accumulate some skills. It was at that point that I started uh, volunteering to help uh, the office with these seminars as an instructor. Um, and that just started to develop further and further um, into my role last year as a faculty fellow, um, uh -huh. which allowed me to, what I describe it as, it allowed me to kind of have a part-time job in addition to my teaching and research um, so that I could spend uh, one day a week at, at the Faculty Development Center and really um, participate in a, a direct way in the development of our one-time sessions, but also we have a week-long faculty institute in the summer 
And this past year, we started a semester long opportunity for faculty. So I've just kind of been able to ramp up my activities. Um, and it's really been satisfying for me. I've been able to meet so many people at my university in different departments and really gain an appreciation for faculty development, like the, the role that you have at your university. Yeah, and again, I'm just so pleased to hear that because as faculty developers like myself, and especially for those faculty developers or center directors that have a small center and don't really have a lot of people to do professional development, a good idea really is to you know, advertise, call for proposals, and then give the faculty an opportunity to really participate. Because as you are describing, it's an opportunity for you too. So faculty development is not just about faculty coming to the center and really benefiting from this, the, the sessions that they attend, but also an opportunity for them to engage as facilitators. So that in yes. itself is faculty development, and it's an, a great opportunity for service. Absolutely, and I have not been the only one that's taken advantage of this opportunity, but I still uh, view it as maybe less pursued compared to some other more um, typically pursued forms of service, uh, especially within the context of a, a promotion packet, you know, like committees, like faculty government. So I really would like to pr promote this idea and encourage more people to consider jumping into the faculty development area. So do you, I know you mentioned that you were a faculty fellow, so I guess you could naturally flow into volunteering into those years. What about people who are not faculty fellow, fellows? Do, do you have call for proposals at your university or people just naturally volunteer? I mean, yes, I mean, it's, it's frankly easier than that. Um, I was able to have an opportunity to um, lead a session and just because I expressed an interest in that and at my university the faculty development um, staff um, is very open to just letting anyone um, try on this role to see if it's a good fit for them uh, at our university we emphasize um, involving faculty and faculty development um, because there's that peer education uh, potential um, and even if I am working with someone in a completely different discipline, you know, we're finding ways that we can connect by identifying the same types of challenges, um, the same types of um, uh, context. For example, I'm teaching a small class versus I'm teaching a large class versus I'm teaching a lab class. So I think the more that people get involved, I know that I've observed this in my university, uh, the more they're going to see how they can learn from a leader like yourself, but also learn from each other. Right. And that's just so important because sometimes you really do not know all the answers. Because I could ask you many questions today and you could give me many examples, but each individual experience is going to be so different. Mm -hmm. I like what you say, just, just, just step in and start and then a lot of things will unfold from there and you mentioned also that um, it was almost like a part-time job mm -hmm. you're enjoying that right so. absolutely absolutely and uh, I, I was promoted I think that's uh, probably a, an important part of this type of interview like I was successful in that um, but also very important to share is that this area of service is definitely something that I plan to continue with, and I, and I am. I am involved as a facilitator for our uh, year-long course for faculty, and we have 30 faculty members from uh, many different departments um, engaged in this teaching practices exercise that we have right now, or this seminar. Wow, this is really a genuine form of service because you are promoted, not just at the associate level, but at the full professor level and you really still continue to do this. So it's really, you know, doing faculty, faculty development activities is really an enjoyable thing to do. So, yeah, also what I, what I wanna emphasize is that when I found kind of my passion for service at the university, then I was kind of unstoppable. I didn't see it as work. I, I definitely describe it as a part-time job um, because I did dedicate uh, a day per week to your office or the equivalent of your office. 
Um, but I, I enjoyed it and I, I'm still spending time with them you know, after I fulfilled my role as the faculty fellow. I'm, I'm so impressed. One day per week dedicated to faculty development. Wow. Um, um, I am impressed. Let me ask you, so it seems as if you're having good success with this strategy. Are there any challenges uh, or perhaps there are no challenges? I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, I think the first challenge was overcome. I really, I've been at my university for almost 20 years and I have been searching for that way to get involved, um, searching for that perfect fit beyond my regular job, teaching and scholarship, for example, and advising students and getting involved in the community. Um, I think one challenge for me uh, was that I knew I was interested in faculty development as a student, as a faculty member that wanted to get better at teaching in every context. And I was wondering, am I qualified enough to teach my faculty colleagues? So I did have that too much self-doubt. I, I, I was thinking, well, if not me, then who? I may as well give this a try. Um, but I got a, a lot of support from the leadership at our university and um, what's been nice is I've been able to um, serve my colleagues in the same types of ways that I would serve my students. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, just advising another faculty member about how they might approach a challenge that I also face, uh, giving them some ideas, um, addressing uh, the use of digital tools. Is there a way that I can handle a snow day or is there a way I can blend my class more effectively? Um, so I was doing some of those things with students and now I'm able to work one-on-one -on -one with my faculty colleagues. But also I, I certainly am used to teaching a small class and these seminars, there would usually be maybe 15 or 20 uh, faculty colleagues and, and I felt comfortable in that role. Um, and then uh, there have been other opportunities, like for example, where I met you, I presented at the OLC conference um, and I've had some opportunities to address um, the university as a whole about um, you know, broadening our perspective as educators. Exactly. And I just really liked um, the fact that you are not afraid of sharing, even though you do not feel as if you have reached. Because I think what has happened with people, we think, oh, I'm not qualified to share. And if we wait on that, then the people who would need to benefit from the expertise that we know already, they will not get to benefit from that. And I think this is just a current theme among even individuals. Am I qualified to do this? You know, mm -hmm. even the summit, I could say, okay, I'll just keep this little summit to myself. But um, people are like, oh, share it, share it on the pod list, sir. Just, just share it. And mm -hmm. you don't have to wait till everything is perfect because, you know, people are out there waiting on you to just show up, show up with what you have so far and then everything else will, will um, fall in. So thank you so much for really sharing what you have learned and being willing to continue to share with others. And I think that's really a page that we can all take out of your book and those who are doing it as well. And thank so, you. right, so I know that using service for promotion and tenure will take different forms for different individuals. But are there any resources that you would encourage our, review, our viewers to review? And if so, could you just tell us about what you'd be willing to share with us? Um, sure, I very much found that the conference we attended, the OLC, would be a good resource for individuals, though that uh, definitely emphasized online and blended learning. Um, I do plan on sharing some resources with you uh, that you're using to support your seminars uh, or your webinars, um, including, I plan on sharing some snippets, uh, some examples from my promotion application, the service part of that, um, so that people can kind of have some concrete examples. And also a visit to our um, faculty development office. We have a, a different title. We've kind of moved away specifically from digital learning uh, to a more broad perspective on teaching strategies that include digital and online and blended learning. Uh, so I, I plan on providing that um, for you and your viewers as well. There, there, we have a lot of resources within those sources. Wow. 
I am looking forward to looking at those resources. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, I, we love examples, really, we, we really do. I'm wondering if there's a challenge or an encouragement that you'd like to leave our viewers with today. Uh, it kind of is a, a summary of what we've talked about. Um, I did see service not as a challenge for promotion relative to, oh, am I going to have enough service? I, I felt confident that I would have enough service. Oh. But what I wanted to demonstrate um, was a long-standing commitment to something at the university that I felt like was making a positive and kind of permanent contribution and something that I saw myself doing after I was promoted. So that would be the challenge. And then a second part of that challenge and encouragement is to keep looking for that area of service that really inspires you. Something that you would do anyway, something that you look forward to, um, uh, meetings that you look forward to because you're developing new programs for faculty. Um, interactions with faculty colleagues in different departments. Like I said before, I've been at my university for 20 years, but I was able this past year to just continue to meet more people. Um, so I, I am very enthusiastic about this area of service. So uh, from a larger perspective, my advice is find that thing at your university. And, and I'm making an argument that this could be that thing if you like teaching. And most of you that are watching this do like teaching. And as a, faculty, as a faculty developer, I do agree. And you don't know how pleased I am to know that you are really using faculty development and enjoying it as, service, as a service activity. Great. Well, this is one of the reasons why I'm here is our conversation at that conference. So it was really great connecting with you. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us this strategy to give us some practical ideas and also for the resources that you will be sharing with us. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for engaging me in this conversation. It was nice to connect with you again. Yes, it was a great pleasure to have you. And to our viewers, I would encourage you to share this conversation with others and Remember that all are welcome to subscribe and we look forward to seeing you again in the next episode of this This Works For Me Virtual Summit. See you soon!